before the dawn, there was Michael. Sure. I'm saying before the dawn because we are out before dawn. Uh, it makes a little more sense if you see the personal side of things on the other vlog, but to explain it here, I woke up early and I made it out like an hour before dawn. A quick morning out, hopefully. We're going to take the camera, just as still photography, and go look for the hummingbird. Just like, we're going to go peek in and see what's going on in the nest. If there are indeed eggs hatched and babies and feeding, like we talked about last week, then I'll come back to the car, I'll get my tripod and the whole video set up, and I'll go back and I'll watch for a little bit. If not, no big deal. We'll do a quick walk around, take some pictures. Not going to be a whole lot today. We got a lot of stuff to do this weekend.
That was good. Yeah, good stuff. Good time out. I'm having fun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I uh, realized while I was out there, I don't know if I actually explained why I said Before the Dawn and why it's titled. I think it's fairly obvious, but I'm just going to cut in back there. So there we go. So first thing, uh, hummingbird, still nesting, no babies. Uh, I just took, a, I, I stayed, I took a picture or two, then I moved back so that she wouldn't feel like I was encroaching and then waited she left so I could see the nest I didn't see any evidence took some more pictures and then I left and I started walking around um, one thing that I definitely saw was some some cool birds <laughs> we, we definitely saw some of the regulars um, some of the yellow warbler a robin at one point there was a robin on the trail ahead of me and usually when you see a bird and the bird sees you the bird goes in the different direction. But this time, I kneel down so I can get a picture of the bird on the on the pathway, and the bird starts coming, <laughs> the robin's coming at me. <laughs> What's going on? Robin saw a worm. Robin ate the worm. I think I got some photos of a robin eating a worm, which is pretty cool. Um, I saw some other birds here and there. Nothing great. There was no sunlight today. Full cloud coverage. So, I don't know how well everything will come out, typically. I do need sunlight to take better pictures. Um, this will be interesting to see how this camera handles it pretty well. They, they look great on the tiny little screen, but that doesn't mean much when I actually get it into the editing process. We'll see. But because of that, um, there was one thing that I saw that really took the cake for everything else. I'm walking up kind of out of the woods and up towards the path, and then there's the river. And this whole time, I am taking photos I, I put on my my harness, which is a, a shoulder harness, so it kind of distributes the weight along the front and my back with all that, and then it's got a harness on either side. So I, I put the pocket cinema camera, which pocket is the wrong word, it is huge. I really, it really cemented that I like having that there to pull up and get some landscape video. I really want to get a different camera for that that's much lighter and smaller, easier to use. I already have the plan for it, I just have to figure out how to afford that because... Uh, basically, my plan is to take this Sony camera and make this the landscape video and then get the next upgrade from this, which is about $4,000, get a better Sony one that's faster and better and put it on this lens. So anyway, I'm walking around doing that, taking some landscape video and also doing um, still photos, and I see something big come up kind of near the water up into the sky big bird big wings <laughs> not big bird from sesame street but a large bird and i wonder what that is and so i'm i'm looking and i'm getting closer and i'm like maybe i'm not sure what it is it's definitely a raptor of some kind i'm i'm still not entirely sure what it is um we'll see but I go closer up to the river, and I'm watching, and I'm looking, and I don't see anything. And then I see something on the river itself kind of floating in the water. I wonder what that is. So I grab the camera and, you know, look up with the camera and start trying to focus in on that. And all of a sudden, wings spread out from it. And, oh, oh, it's the big bird. It's trying to get something out of the water. Now, here's the thing. Because there's no light, 
I have my camera set up when I'm doing still photography to use one of three modes, and each mode is progressively faster shutter speed and different settings for like, like the fastest one is meant for birds in flight. My, my third setting is birds in flight, so it is very fast shutter speed and the autofocus is set to track so that as soon as it gets a moving object in the frame when you're holding down the, the button to focus, it'll latch onto that and then keep that in focus as you move the camera. I wasn't on that setting. I was on the lowest setting, which is just meant to get a picture. It is the rule of thumb is shoot at a shutter speed higher than your focal length in order to get crisp and clear photos. So you don't have motion blur from the shakiness of trying to hold it, and especially with something like this. Now this is a 200 to 600 with an extender on it. So typically my second setting is at least 800 uh, for a shutter speed to try to cut down on any blur or anything like that. But the first setting is set to just take a picture. <laughs> Just try and do what I can to keep the ISO low so it's not super grainy and try to get something decent. So it will, it is allowed to drop below that on the shutter speed. And it drops, I think, 320 is the lowest, which no matter what, I guess if I'm technically shooting at 200 with the extender, it's possible that, it, that it's still following that rule, which it's a rule of thumb. It's not a hard and fast set in stone kind of thing. So I got it on that setting. And so it's set to do that. It's set to get it at the widest possible aperture to let in as much light as possible. And for that, you need a slower shutter speed and a higher ISO. It's not the best setting for that stuff. It works pretty well when there's plenty of sunlight. No sunlight today. So I don't think any of those would have come out. But that was when the bird is in the water with whatever it is. And it's also a lot of me moving and stuff. We'll see. I hope, but I'm not sure. But then it takes off. And I'm watching, and you know, there's like a bank before the, the actual river. So there's plenty of trees and things like that in between us. So I can't really see what I'm looking at entirely just yet. But I do see it take off again with that stuff. But then it, it went up and it did a circle around and then it went down to the other end and it did a couple circles. And throughout all of that, I took as many pictures as I could on the much faster setting that I was just talking about with it being tracked. So those should be in focus. They're in the sky, but we don't have a full sunlight. So maybe... We'll see. I'm not super hopeful of any of those. I think some of the other ones we got may have come out. No, maybe nothing did today. <laughs> maybe because of a lack of sunlight, we just didn't have the shutter speed to get any clear photos of any birds. So be it. That's fine. It is what it is. It was still a good time. And there's one more thing that I want to talk about because I've been thinking about it a lot. And this is the closest opportunity I have to talk about it here in this. I think it pertains to this specifically. I was reading a photography thread this week in a forum as i as i do i just you know have a couple that i check regularly i i typically pick up things from that and stuff like that somebody was asking about taking photos of planes something i've done before now i don't typically go into any of the uh posts that i see with people asking for critiques or you know feedback and like that. i don't i don't agree with a lot of it i have my own opinion of that stuff and I don't like to see critiques of other people, things like that. Sometimes it is positive feedback. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes people are on the internet and it's not always great. So I don't post my stuff asking for feedback or critiques. And I don't typically go into something like that. But it was interesting because I saw the photo and it's of a plane taking off. And it's, you know, from the ground, obviously, looking up at the plane and the plane is in the sky. And somebody was like, hey, I really like doing this. I'm just getting into it. What kind of tips? Something like that. You know, I'm not happy with what... What I'm getting, how they're coming out, which is totally fine and totally justified. And the top reply, which I understand, but the top reply was, well, you're making the same mistakes that amateur bird photographers do. They get out, they go out, they see a, they see a bird, and they immediately take a picture of a bird, and then they wonder why the picture sucks. And then went on from there to, to talk about, you know, instead you need to be taking a beautiful picture with a bird in it instead of taking a bird picture and hoping it'll come out beautiful. I know what they're talking about. I get what they are going for here. I've heard it put in much better ways that are not as negatively facing. Uh, there's a famous photographer that I do not remember who does a lot of bird photography. And the saying about him, something that I've heard, you know, I've read enough times that it is stuck, is that he doesn't go out and takes a bird photograph. He goes and takes a, I don't remember exactly. 
He finds a beautiful composition and then lets a bird come into frame and then takes the picture, which I get. I know what they're going for. They're going for a composure shot well, get a good interesting photo first, and then a bird is in it as well. Make it part of it and not make the bird the thing because you'll you'll fail. I, I know what they're getting at there. I don't necessarily agree, but I also wonder exactly how. Like, you talk about, oh, this is really interesting. If you go out and you find a spot, because this is how it was presented, is that the guy goes out and goes, well, I see, you know, this pure, this pretty flower, and then he just sits and waits for days on end or weeks or months or however long it takes until he gets a picture of a bird with that. Cool. Not all of us have the time to do that, unfortunately. <laughs> it's kind of a different world. You can't really... I'm not saying that, no. You can be a photographer and do it professionally and make a living off of it, sure. And then you can spend all of your time doing this, honing your craft as you would expect. I cannot do that. But, for me, with my opinion... I don't think that's the best. I don't think that advice is phrased the best. And it, I kind of disagreed with it because I also think that there should be more to it than that. And it should be do what you like, do what you want. Just because someone else doesn't like the photo, just because someone else can find fault in it, or they're saying that it's not as composed as well as, especially comparing it to others. Don't like that. Don't like any of that. I think there's nothing wrong with going out and taking a picture of a plane. I've done literally that. You can just go out and take a picture of the plane as it's taking off and stuff like that. And it can still be cool to you because the plane can be the subject. Even if it's not as composed, you know, as well composed as something else, even if it's not technically accurate with those things, or it could be better because of this stuff, you can still just enjoy it. You can still just see that and just enjoy the, the photo and just enjoy the plane and look at it and think about all the work that goes into it and think about how much time it takes someone to build a plane i i know a little bit about that my dad was an aircraft mechanic but i also have a general interest in aeronautics and the airline industry i listen to podcasts about that and you know I, I, i'm interested in that kind of stuff as it is it's really fascinating for all of the um all the different aspects of what goes into such a thing could you just lay down? I have one mustache hair that just sticks up into my nose, and every time I talk, it tickles and it bothers me. I'm trying not to trim them as short and let them grow out a little bit longer to try to fill it in, because I've always had kind of a weak growing mustache that does not match the rest of the facial hair. Anyway, that was something there. Look, when I go out, it's just for me, and this is why I find enjoyment into it. Other people, if that's your deal, if you are trying to find a photo that no one can find fault with, if you're trying to take a photo, I should say, go ahead, have fun. If that's what you want, by all means. If you specifically take photos and you're not happy with them and you're comparing yourself to others, okay, that's for you to do. I don't think that's for others to judge your work for you because there are people that don't need that and don't want that. There are people who just go out and do it. I understand the difference between trying to take a great photograph and just trying to take a bird photograph. That is what I do. And on different days, I'm in a different mood to do different things. Because for me, any day that I'm out doing this is a good time. Any photos that I take, I'm happy with. I find reasons to be happy with them there. And that way I don't depress myself by trying to chase things that are unrealistic or set myself to other people's standards. My standards are just to go out and do that. And as I've talked about, it's kind of just a collecting thing as well. I related it in one of the videos specifically, how does bird photography relate to Pokemon? I'm trying to collect them all. I don't care if it's not a great photograph of a bird. If I can take a photo of a bird and identify it, that's a win in my book. So I can just go out and see birds and do exactly what they're talking about of saying an amateur bird photographer just sees a bird, takes picture of bird, and then wonders what, like, I can do that and still be happy with myself and be happy with my results. And I hope that that can be the same for other people. I hope anyone who watches this who's interested and who maybe has gotten that feedback before from people sees, the, uh, sees my side of it as well and sees the other side of it of going, it's for you, man. Do what you like. Do you like going out and taking pictures of birds? Are they the best po photos of birds? I don't take great photos of birds at all. There's very few. But I've also been doing this for... <laughs> five or six years, it's going to be a lifetime thing. And at the end of the lifetime, I'll be lucky to probably have, I don't know, a hundred great photos. I think right now I probably have two or three, if you determine it that way. 
And that's why I don't try to think about it in those terms very often, because that sounds kind of depressing with, for the amount of time and effort that it goes into it. Maybe it'll get better as I go on. Technology certainly getting better. I'm using a much better camera than I was before, and my photos are coming out much better. Now I'm training myself more so. I think I got to a point where my skills in the camera, my skills started getting better while the camera was kind of lacking because it was a very old camera. Now I have a much newer, nicer camera. It's not to say that you have to have that. There's the other argument of people who are going, get good skills first before you spend the money. And my, the, that might be better financial sense, but there's also certain things. You're not going to take an amazing bird photograph if you've got a tiny little lens. Not if what you want is an amazing bird photograph of a nice close-up. And that's what I like. I like nice close-up clear images, and I also like images of more telling the story, showing the stuff. I've gotten feedback before, people being like, you need to crop this in. This is terrible. And it's like, what... It's a great photo. It's, I mean, it, you know, whatever your determinations are, I like it. It's got the bird in it, and I'm showing all the foliage and stuff. That's my style, the way I want to do it. Art is subjective. Art is very subjective. If I'm happy with it, that's all that matters. Anyway, that got under my skin a little bit. I see that kind of stuff. I hope that that comes across in a better way than how I just ended it in a negative way. Do what makes you happy. If going out and taking photos, regardless of their quality compared to others, regardless of their quality compared to what you want, you know, if it's happy, if it's good enough for you, then it's good. If you're unhappy with it, and that's typically, that's how I make my determinations. I know what can be better. I know what I can do better. And that's what I'm trying to do better on. But that's all coming from me and my own determinations. I don't judge other people's work. I don't, I don't, I don't really want other people judging my work. I'm happy with what I'm doing. And if I'm not happy with it, then I'm going to fix it. <laughs> I don't settle for less. Can you maybe tell that based on the amount of time and effort and what I do with everything? <laughs> so hopefully that was somewhat more positive feedback or positive opinion than negative, because that is how I meant it when I was thinking about it. I saw that it went, well, I don't really agree with this. I'm not going to get into an argument over the internet because that's pointless, but I know that there are people out there who watch this because they also are interested in going out and taking bird photographs, and I hope that this has been useful. I don't have a way to wrap this video up, so, um, yeah. I'll probably put the photographs in the middle before this last part so that this would be the ending of it. So until next time, maybe we'll see more hummingbirds. I mean... Until next time, I'll do other things, and you should do other things, and then next time, we'll see baby hummingbirds. I don't know. I'm kind of curious if because we had such a long winter, that means that their incubation period starts later, so the eggs are just at the beginning and not towards the end of the spectrum of, I don't know, I need to do more research on the subject. Maybe that's what I'll be doing. What will you be doing? There's literally no way I could know that. <laughs>